Hello, thank you for joining me today for this segment of Ask Pastor D. Our question is, why didn't the vision come to pass? Let's pray. Father, we worship you today. We bless you. Thank you for this opportunity to learn more about you, to get nuggets of truth from your word. Holy Spirit, you are invited here. I ask you to give me utterance. Let your words, what you would have given to your people, come forth out of my mouth. I yield to you. I thank you for victory. I thank you for clarity. I thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, again, our question is, why didn't the vision come to pass? During the course of my lifetime, I've met people. Some have been discouraged, some angry, some disappointed, upset with God because a word that was spoken to them seemingly did not materialize. And so uh, the person said, I must have made that up. Those thoughts that I had, those were just thoughts of grandeur. I don't know where that came from. That wasn't of God. Or perhaps someone had a word spoken to them, a word of prophecy spoken over them. Could have been at a church service and something uh, that was set up. They were called out, hands laid on them. It seemingly is not coming to pass, or as far as you know, it didn't come to pass. So the person says, oh, you know what, that person, they missed God. They called out the wrong one. That word was not for me. I first off want to start off saying, if you've had a dream, a vision from God, and this is something that could have been given to you when you were a child, something that you were just going to do something great, uh, some vision, some something, and it just seemed too good to be true, too big. Well, most likely that was God because that's how our father operates. He's not going to give you a little vision. He's not going to give you something that you could do. The things that he tells us to do, and I will say this, Every single child of God is given an assignment. Every person. God does not have some children he loves and some he doesn't love. That is, He's our father. Every single person has been given an assignment. And that assignment that he gives you is going to be bigger than you. It's going to be something that you would say, now how in the world is that going to come to pass? And the thing is, as you persevere and it comes to pass, all you will be able to say is, oh, thank you, Lord. There's no way I could have done this. There's no way that this vision could have come to pass. There's no way. Look at the fruit here. Lord, you did this. And I give you praise. I thank you. That's the kind of vision the Father gives you. Something you won't be able to take any credit for. You won't be able to take one ounce of glory for because you know he propped you up. He propped you up. He made it come to pass. So that big dream that seemingly didn't come to pass or maybe someone, as I said, uh, spoke over you and you're thinking, well, they totally missed God. Did they miss God? Turn with me to 1 Timothy 1 18. Let's read this together because we're going to get an understanding here. The Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved so that we can be a, 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 a workman and we rightly divide the word of truth so that we know what's going on. So we want to study so we learn the things of the spirit. Okay. 1 Timothy 1 18. Now, are you there? It says here, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before concerning thee, that thou by them mightest wage a good warfare. 
And I'm going to read it to you also from the Message Bible. And this is the Apostle Paul who wrote over two thirds of the New Testament. And this is what he's saying here. I'm passing this work on to you, my son, Timothy, the prophetic word that was directed to you prepared for this, prepared us for this. All of those prayers are coming together now. So you will do this well, fearless in your struggle, keeping a firm grip on your faith and on yourself. After all, this is a fight we're in. So, when a word of prophecy is given to you, you have to contend for that. You have to fight for that to come to pass. Let me, you have to be fierce. Do you know we are in a war? And I know that's not good news, but whether you know it or not, we are. There's a war between good and evil. When we know our father's the victor, we know that his son Jesus defeated the enemy. But yet and still, the enemy wants to keep us from carrying out the things that have been spoken over us. The apostle Paul told Timothy, take that prophecy and you wage war with it. Do you think that if, let's say, if, since you were a child and you were told, this, I'm just making this up, for example, that you're going to be a business owner and you're going to be so successful in your businesses that you will be able to help sustain the poor. You will be able to go in and help widows, uh, 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 single parents, widowers, help the anyone that is uh, needs help destitute. And you'll be able to take some of those resources and go in, educate people, train people, help people. So that could be a dream that was given to a person. Do you think that the devil will just sit back and he's a spirit being, he doesn't know everything, but he can pick up some things. And again, he does, I'm not giving him any credit. He does not know everything. But he knows everybody was given a gift. And you might have talked about it. Do you think he's going to say, oh, oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, they're going to have businesses. They're going to help the poor. Bravo, bravo. Do you think that's what the enemy of your soul is going to do? No. He's going to fight you and throw in obstacles to keep that vision from coming to pass. That's why the P Apostle Paul told Timothy, you hold on to that prophecy and you wage war with it. And what that means is you don't even consider giving up. This dream is set here before you and you make it your business. If I don't know how this is going to come to pass, I'm going to find out how it's going to come to pass. But I will not let go of this vision because this is something my father has spoken to me this is his word this is something he's promised me and i will not let go of his promise even in the natural for those of you that ha have children or you might have a niece nephew cousins or whatever and they could be children and someone might um need one of them might need encouragement so you might say okay I know you're having trouble in your schooling, but if you can pull that D, that D grade, if you can pull that up to a B, I'm going to buy you a bike or I'm going to do this for you. The reason you're giving them that word is it's an incentive for them to press through. So when, that, when they're in that classroom and they feel like I'm, I, don't, I want to put my head down and go to sleep or I don't want to do my homework or I want to act out. I want to do whatever that that word that you gave them, the, the promise of a bike will cause them to settle down, do that homework and do what they need to do to pull that grade up where they can get the prize of that bike. 
So again, I'm saying that that vision that God has given you, you have to be fierce that I'm not letting go of it. You have to contend for it because many times when you first get it, you don't understand it. But you hang on to it. You eat the dream. You sleep that prophecy. You ponder it. You speak it out of your mouth. You worship God and you, th and you thank him. You know, now, Father, I don't understand all of this, but you promised me that I'm going to have businesses and you're going to be able to use me. I'm going to be able to help poor people. So, Father, I worship you. I thank you that this is coming to pass. And you prepare yourself for it. You take a step. You start taking steps that are going to bring you closer to that dream. For example, if he's promised you that you're going to be a, a business owner, well then, that might be the only thing that you have. But you just put yourself in position where you're on at least on a roll getting to that. So you step out totally clueless. But okay, well, the Lord told me I'm going to be a business owner. Well, let me go over here and work at this business then. Or maybe you'll take a business class. But you step out and do something. Because let me say this. You can't just sit at the house and say, oh, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to have many businesses and I'm going to help poor people. And you do absolutely zero. That's like a car. You're trying to move a car. What's easier to move? A car that is in park with the engine cut off and sitting there. What's easier to move? A car that's just sitting there. Or is it easier to move a car that at least is started up? At least it started up. And that car might even be in neutral. But which is easier to push to steer where it's supposed to go? What I'm saying is at least just get the engine started. Start making a movement towards the prophecy, knowing that you are going to wage war for it to come to pass. I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 4, please. To Mark chapter 4. Because this, this here will give us a clear picture of how spiritual things are. Mark chapter 4. Now this is Jesus talking. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. Now I've started at uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken or behold or listen. There went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed some, and he's talking about seed here. This is a sower sowing seed. Some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. I'm in verse 7 here. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. Verse 9, And he said unto them, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And Jesus said unto them, verse 13, Know you not this parable? 
And how then will you know all parables? This parable is the foundation of how things work in the kingdom of God. The so Verse 14, the sower soweth the word. The sower is our father God. The word goes out. So the prophecy, the word that he spoke to you, that dream, as I mentioned, you could have been a little child and had dreams that God put in your heart of what he wanted you to do. And if you say, he didn't give me a dream, he gave everybody else a dream, but I didn't have one. Let me ask you this. What is it that when you were a little kid, what is it that you wanted to do? Before all of life came in, before all of the voices and all of this out here came in, when you were a little kid, what was it you dreamed about doing? Verse 15. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So the sower went out and he's, the, the word's going forth. And it says immediately, not the next day. Not two weeks later, immediately, the enemy will come and try to pluck that word from you. Let's say you don't understand it. Or let's say you're that person that he told, well, you're going to be this business owner and you're going to help your community. You're going to do great things. And the thought will could come through your mind. Well, I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm so broke. How am I going to help educate other people? When I don't even have a high school diploma. Oh, forget that. That was the enemy coming immediately to steal that word spoken. To pluck it from you. And that happens. People get a, go to church, get a good word, call for the prophet speaks over the person. I see the Lord is saying this to you. They hear it, don't understand, to walk out to church, get in their car and just say, oh, that was not of God. Was it of God or wasn't it? If it was something great that God has for you to do, oh, I, I, I would say that was of God. But you judge the word for yourself. Verse 16. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. So this is the other group. They heard the word, and the devil wasn't able to immediately steal it from them. They heard it with gladness. Oh, wow, I'm going to be a business owner. Totally awesome. This is great. Verse 17, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure before a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. Remember, the enemies after the word. Immediately they are offended. So they hear the word, I'm going to be this business owner. So they said, okay, well, let me take some business classes. So let me do this, let me do that. So they go to school, something happens, and the teacher said, had the nerve to call me stupid. The teacher had the nerve to ask me, well, why don't you know your multiplication facts? How old are you, 30, and you don't know this, and you don't know that? And so they get offended, they back up. Because they look at it and they just say, well, you know what? I'm not putting up with this. I don't have to put up with this. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. Get offended. And sh the enemy comes and steals that word from them. Or they might work in a business area where God placed them. And the people there don't like them. Oh, they prejudice over here. I mean, so what? I mean, remember the dream. Remember the vision. And walk away. Verse 18. So that's the second group. Now here's the third group. And these are they which are sown among thorns. So these are the ones there. So they grew up a little bit more. So they heard the word, held on to it, kept going, fought off the offense. They kept going, kept going. 
And so they're growing up, they're sprouting up, they're, bring, they're doing okay. But the thorns come to choke the word out of them. So what are the thorns? Let's look at verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Again, what is the enemy after? The word of God placed in your heart. So what happens is these people, they sprout up, they have some success. And instead of pressing on to the full fruition of the thing that's promised, they get sidetracked. The thorns, it could be money. You know, they start making a little bit of money. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm moving on up. So they just, oh, I'm doing okay. And instead of keep going, they just, okay, well, I, I have this nice condo, have this nice car. So they stop pressing in to the fullness of the vision God gave them. Or they might meet Miss Cutie Patootie over here. She's looking good. At you mean I can get somebody like that? You know, I, I, I'm doing all right. I, you know, I'm making a little money. I can get me. I can get. I can, okay, you can put the ring on the finger and everything because you, you're doing okay. Or might need Mr. Hanson or handsome. So you get sidetracked. And after a while, you, you forget about the vision. It says the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. So the person does not produce what they're supposed to produce. And there's another passage of scripture and it says a prosperity. This is a, this is a hard word here, but it's the word of God. It says prosperity ruins the fool, but none of us are fools. None of us will stand before God empty handed and say, well, you know, I got sidetracked here because of the prosperity. It says prosperity ruins the fools, but there is not a fool listening to me. We are not fools. We are wise in spiritual things. Then it says here, and these are they which are sown on good ground. This is us. Such as hear the word, receive the word, and bring forth fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some a hundred. We are going to produce fruit. When we stand before the Father, we will say, we accomplish that which you gave us to accomplish, and we give all the glory to you. We take our crowns and we cast them at your feet. We say thank you for helping us do things that even ourselves, we looked and said, oh Lord, how is this ever going to get done? But we thank you and give you praise because we are going to persevere. So I'm asking you, where are you at on your journey? Have you let the things God has asked you to do, that big dream, have you let it drop? Did you let the dream drop because you didn't understand it? Because you had never seen anybody else do it before? Because it was uncharted territory? And you were like, I never saw anybody do this. I don't know how it's going to get done. Well, that's a that's a that's a, a dream from God. That's his MO. He's giving you something big and magnificent to do. Or did you get angry with someone along the way? Did you get offended? We've talked about this before. That's one of the devil's main tactics to get us off. Get you know, we, we get upset about something. Or did you let the success get you off track? Did you let the nice car, the boat, the good looking girl, the good looking guy, did you let them get you off track? Whatever the case, if you're off track, get back on track. If you're on track, stay on track. Fight the good fight of faith. Because I want to let you know this. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 11, verse 29. It says here, the book of Romans chapter 11, 11 verse 29. 
It says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Whatever he has called you to do, it's still there. He will. He does not rescind what he called you to do because you got off track. Because you got discouraged or whatever happened. The NIV says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Irrevocable. So what is your assignment? What is your assignment? And there are no excuses. I remember um, at my Bible school, the dean used to say, no excuses. <laughs> you might say, well, look, I, you know, I couldn't get this done. I couldn't get this done. Or I have, he says, no excuses. And so he would want you to say, no excuses, sir. It was not, he was totally awesome. So, do you still have breath in you? Because you could be saying, well, I'm older. Now, nah, I'm, I'm too old to be trying to do all the things God told me to do. If you still have breath in you, get back on track. There are no excuses. If you still have breath, do what he called you to do. He is able to take your life, the Holy Spirit, and recalculate things as that GPS and get you where you're supposed to be. Now, unless uh, this is such a good topic, I, I really um, enjoy this topic because it's just such a blessing. And there are so many people that have gifts and callings or and just have let them fall to the wayside. So unless the Lord tells me something differently, when we have our next segment together, I'm going to pick this back up. Uh, we'll, we'll just continue with this. We'll go a little deeper in it. And I want to let you know, too, that this is July and this is the year 2022 because I know this is going to be on social media and it'll just be out there. So in August, the pastor where I went to Bible school, he's going to be here in Detroit and he's having a 10 city tour. And so I'm inviting you all to attend. I'll put the information in the description. And I, I want to say, I have found out that some of the people that I talk to are just in Christian uh, circles. You know, they're just, uh, they oppose this. I mean, they feel threatened. Well, why is he coming here? Well, the thing is, he's not coming to take something from the city. He's taking to put something in the, the city of Detroit. The location will be a neutral spot. It will be at the Detroit Marriott, right down at the Wren Center. So it's not going to be at anybody's church. And, and I'm not plugging a person, okay? Because my allegiance is to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to say that I followed this ministry. And as a matter of fact, I those of you that know me, you know I commuted for 10 months to Chicago, worked full time in Detroit, the Detroit area. And every weekend commuted to Chicago to go to Bible school. That does not mean that there were, there were not other good Bible schools, but God specifically told me that's where I want you to go because the, of the uh, specific anointing that helps for the inner cities. And that's what God has called me to do, it. A, a ministry for right now, working in the inner cities. So, um, and so that's sort of saying something about the ministry and the ministry's platform. They're not coming to take something from Detroit, but to add something to Detroit. As a matter of fact, there's a pitch competition and the first prize will be $10,000. So if you have a great business idea, you want to be there. Either way, I'll put the uh, description for the event I'll put the information in the description box. And I'm going to end in prayer. And Father, I just thank you, Father. 
I give you praise. I thank you that you're so good and wonderful. You're marvelous. You are great. And you are greatly to be praised. You love us. And those gifts that you have put in us, you have not taken them back. You have not looked at us and said, well, they are failures. They can't accomplish it. Oh, no. You said we're well able to do whatever you've called us to do. You have equipped us. You've given us the tools that we need to be successful in every area of our life. So when we stand before you, we will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We bless you and we thank you because fruit will come from our lives. Every single one of us, every person in the sound of my voice, I decree and declare you will bring forth fruit. You will not stand before the Father empty-handed. And I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And uh, in closing, this is my final close here. I want to say that if you have a question, please submit it. It's, you will send your questions so you can do it privately now. Ask Pastor D at bloodwatchchurch.com. I know that's a little long. But it's Ask Pastor D at bloodwatchchurch.com. So I'll see you soon. Hope to see you at the Detroit Marriott in August. August, the, uh, that week. Uh, the, the, I'll be working with the youth the 12th and the 13th and doing some other things. I'll, I'll be there at the pitch competition. I'll be there. You be there. God bless you. Bye-bye.